So guys, in this video, we'll be talking about how we can actually use forecast worksheet feature of Excel. This is one of the newest feature. Very amazing. It'll give you a brief insights that how you can actually forecast the past data and based on that, you'll be able to see the trend, right? And that is in your hand. You can decide the trend for, let's say, three months, six months, one year, completely depending on you. And there are few statistical outcome you can also get. And you can also see this in the form of a chart also. It could be a line chart. It could be a column chart also. So you have all those options available along with sensitivity analysis. So we'll see that feature in detail. So guys, my name is Lokesh Lalwani and uh, I am representing Nurture Tech Academy. We are into this training business for a long time and welcome to our channel. If you have not subscribed to this channel so far, I would recommend to hit the subscribe button first of all. Because we are coming up with the with such kind of features of Excel and along with that PowerPoint and Power BI. So hit that subscribe button. Also click on the bell icon. Let's see how we can do it. Let's head over to the laptop. Okay. So over here we have the monthly sales available. We have the date and this is if I'm not wrong, this is going to be three, two years of data rather. And uh, we have all the dates available. It's basically the month, month wise sales are mentioned. So based on this historical data, we'll see that how we can actually see the trend. So this is the historical data. This is the past data based on C. We'll see the trend, right? And nothing manual needs to be done over here. We'll simply select the data and based on that, we'll be creating the focus sheet. And this feature is available only from Excel 2016 onward. So you must make sure that you should be having the latest or at least 2016 in your system. I would like to show you this also. If I go to the file tab, how you can actually check your Excel uh, version. You can actually go over there and there you can see an, an option of account. In the account, you can see uh, I am using Microsoft Plus 2019. So you can check whether which feature of which version of Excel you are using. So it should be either 16, 19, Office 365, right? either of them. So first of all, I'll be selecting the data. So I'm here, I'll be using a shortcut control shift down arrow and it'll be selecting all the data till the end. I'm using another shortcut, very beautiful. I that really close to my heart. It's going to be control backspace. So it will take me to the active cell, right? So I've selected this simply. I'll just go to the data tab under the data tab on the rightmost corner. You will see we have an option of forecast sheet just beside what if analysis, which we generally use a lot. So we have forecast sheet. I will be clicking on the same and this option will pop up and it's already showing you a preview of the chart that you will get along with this feature. So here you can already see the blue line is actually the past data which is there and the orange line is all about the data. It's all about the forecasting, right? So I'll explain all these three lines by the way to you in a minute. First of all, forecast end. So it is showing you the date on which this forecast will end. Uh, so that you can change. As you can see, the data is basically ending. I want to show you this. It's basically ending on, you can see, uh, the last month, which is December 2018, right? And we are picking up six months forecast from there till six months. You can actually change the state to, let's say, seven month, eight month, one year depending on you. Now we'll see the other options which are available here. I'll simply click on the option and there we have all the options available. First of all, it says forecast start. So this is very interesting. Sometimes it happens as you can see this COVID scenario. So in this case, you can actually ignore past couple of months, right? Because maybe because of the COVID, your, um, your business has been impacted, right? So this you can actually change. You can ignore few past month of data. Uh, so, for example, I just want to show you how it looks like. For example, I'll just go back and I want to start with October, right? First October 2018. So, you can see this blue line is actually, so this orange line is starting and ignoring two months. So, this way you can actually ignore the last month and start from way previous from your actual data. So, that's an option available to you. I'm not going to do it uh, as of now. I'm completely okay with what I have the last date and then we have an option of confidence interval. Now this is very interesting guys. Can you see these orange lines here? One is the thick line in between. This is actual uh, uh, the forecast which is which has been detected by Excel and these thin two 
orange lines so this gap is basically the uh, kind of it's expecting that the forecast values forecasted sales will fall into this bracket right so this is what the confident confidence interval is all about suppose if i increase it uh, it's already been increased this is the highest 95 percent we can increase it more if i reduce it okay so for example i'll change it to let's say 75 right and you can see this gap has been shrunken down now we are less confident than the actual that the actuals will fall into this forecast uh, uh bucket the the grid right so think about it if i increase it it means this gap will increase it means now we are much more confident so that interval is all about if you are much more confident i'll i'll change it to 95 percent it means we are much more confident than the actuals that the actuals will fall into our forecasted grid the range right so that is all about confidence interval now we have an option of seasonality this is also very important why because as you can see as of now this line is a straight line right which is not considering the ups and downs in the actual sales this is very much important it has to consider that because sales won't be like this it won't be a straight line so to change it we should set this manually the seasonality manually seasonality would be will be considering for example three months so every past three months it will consider the ups and downs into our actual sales so i can change it so this this is a period basically now we are talking about a month so one month equivalent to one period so if i change it to let's say three it means it will consider past three months as uh the ups and downs the seasonality and now you can see the ups and downs in the trend also so this is how it looks like that's the use of putting the uh seasonality right there is a little checkbox with us available which says include the forecast statistics if i check it it's optional if i check it once we are done with the option it will just show us few more statistical values okay so i'm just checking it anyway if you think that would be useful for you you can just simply use it and then it says the timeline range this is nothing but the date range that we have selected and the value range it is again the sales value range that we have selected then it says fill missing points using interpolation if it would have been having some uh, some sales blank it means there would not be having any sales amount uh, registered over here for few month in that case it should interpolate them rather than showing us a dip altogether for example if i just go with the zeros it means it will simply show a dip where we where we don't have the value so that is quite misleading um, it's completely up to you because in sometimes you need to show the exact you know trend so in that case you can go with zeros otherwise in this case i'll be using interpolation completely up to you and then if there is a duplicate values how you want to treat it absolutely i think average is something that we should go with we have few more options some count max min and so on we'll go with average right and that's it i'll simply click on create oh, one more option i've left this is the line chart if i go with the column chart it'll look like this as i mentioned earlier you have you'll be having two options and this uh, you have the upper limit and lower limit is basically the uh, forecast uh, the grid right the 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 gap that we have so we'll go with the line chart i believe this looks quite uh, uh, useful and Uh, related in this terms so i'll go with this and i'll click create and there we go it will simply create a new sheet as you can see sheet 1 i'll simply cross it down and we have couple of things with us and this is what we have selected into that box first of all you can see we have all these actual values and then we have all these forecasted values now you'll see these we don't have the actual sales here because these are the forecasted month by the way and these are the forecasted sales this is the actually that thick line right and this is the lower confidence interval right the the lower uh, thin line the orange line and this is the top thin line so somewhere in between this actual uh, the forecast is falling in right and the one the check box that we checked in which is the statistical values this is the one we have all those values available uh, and then finally we have the chart available with us 
which we can use it right this we can put it into the powerpoint also also if it is required to present it and all such things can be done so i believe this feature you found very useful and um, thank you so much guys and i just want to also tell you one thing so i have a detailed course on excel if you want to check it out that course the link is in the description and in the first comment also do check that detailed course you will learn a lot and uh, thank you so much if you haven't subscribed to this channel please subscribe to it right away do like comment if you have any query thank you so much take care bye bye